nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. service for prayer and deliverance tabernacle ministry we're so so excited to have you i'm elder roger green jr the youth pastor here at prayer and deliverance tabernacle ministries and we're just excited that the lord has brought us through another year listen i'm not going to waste any time we're going to get right into it but we want to give a special thanks to some of our friends that have come along to celebrate with us during this new year's eve celebration we want to give a thanks to the c-dub brand music listen go to the app store whether it's google play or the apple store and download their apps from c-dub you'll hear some more information uh, throughout the remainder of this broadcast about the c-dub brand apps they have provided music for us for our new year's eve celebration our friends over at the cross affair they're going to give us some dance and mind and we are going to be featured from recording artist lisa michelle so stay tuned our pastor is going to speak i'm going to speak a little bit our assistant pastor is going to speak we have so much in store for us so i'm gonna get out your way and we're gonna go right into uh the celebration right now so be blessed hey you ready to get your praise on because jasmine and i are about to show you how you can use the hoot triggers plus app to bring in the new year right keep in mind that everything that you're hearing from the vocals to the music all triggered within this app and anybody can do it and i'm about to show you how We gotta get out of here, for real, we, got, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> hey, I'm sure you probably up shouting too, but check it, this app works, it really does work. And all you have to do is go to the App Store, go to Google Play, yes, it's on Android and Apple devices, and download Hoot Triggers Plus. Free 14 day trial, and it's only $24.99 a month after that. Free 14 day trial. Try it through watch night and shout these people, shout the heels out their shoes into the new year because you know it's about to be a Holy Ghost praise party up in here. This music can be at your watch night service. There's no reason for it not to be. If you don't have musicians, this app is for you. Now I know this music is feeling good in the background. Feel like Jasmine want to do a little bit more. I'm gonna let her sing a little bit more. 
I'm, I'm, I gotta, I gotta go. But hey, get the app. I love y'all. This is C Dub with the C Dub brand. Peace out.
Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a great day to be alive, especially as we celebrate this first virtual watch night service. I am so excited to be here. This is one of my favorite services, by the way. I love to start the evening off with giving God praise for all that he's done for me the year that's getting ready to close out. So we have been through a lot during this time, all of us have, but tonight, this is a night of celebration. So when the clock strikes 12, we will be entering into our first day of 2021. Are you excited about it? Well, I am too. I have a scripture that I wanna talk about, and it talks about how old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. And I want to kind of talk to you all about, and my topic is going to be forgetting those things that are behind for something new. Are you excited about it? I am. As we gather together during this virtual watch night service to celebrate, millions of people are thinking about the changes that they need to make in this brand new year. But unfortunately, some of us, uh, are kind of sad and we have a little bit of regret because we did not accomplish the things that we wanted to accomplish in 2020. You know, some of us had, have made commitments to people that we did not keep. We've made commitments even to ourselves. We also promised some people that we were going to do some things that we did not do. And we even set goals that we didn't obtain. And some of us were even disappointed with our lack of spiritual progress. But through it all, we made it and I'm excited about it. So, but I want you to get encouraged today and know that now that it's a new year coming in, that you don't have to continue to worry about those regrets and not even, I don't want you to even think about them because we got another year now that we can start over. I would just say to you, make a serious commitment to do better in 2021. So I would say to you, shake off the regret, move forward, because the next year presents us a golden opportunity to make some serious changes and get them done. And I know you can do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. You just got to sit your mind to it. The action that we take, as Pastor was talking about, determines our outcome. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3, 13 and 14, the Apostle Paul gave us some advice for leaving the past behind and focusing on the future that is before us. The scripture says, Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward into those things which are before us. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. This evening, I want you to focus on the part of that scripture where it says, forgetting those things which are behind. The word forgetting is translated from the Greek word that denotes as turning from one thing to focus on another thing. The something that is finished, done with, obsolete, the word also betrays the idea of something you should turn away from and forget it or deliberately ignore it, purposely disregard it, and completely forgive it. forget it. I know some of the things that we went through in 2020, some of us want to forget. We don't want nobody even to know what we went through. And this is what this scripture is talking about in the Greek word that denotes forgetting. So I want you to keep that in your mind right now as we talk about it. Tonight, I want to encourage you, no matter what you've been through, no matter what somebody has done to you, I want you to forget it and let it go. In other words, forget the pain that they caused you. Forget the trauma. Forget the fear that you faced when you were going through some things. Forget the losses. Forget the betrayal. Forget the offenses. Forget the abuses. Forget the losses that you had. Some of us lost our jobs. 
Some of us lost loved ones. I'm not telling you to forget your loved ones, but I am telling you to forget the pain, forget the hurt, forget the grieving. It's time to move on. They're in a better place and they're in the bosom of God. They don't have to suffer the things that we're going through. So let's just forget it. Wipe your tears. Stand up and be strong and see the salvation of God because he wants to deliver you and set you free. He, he, he's seen your grief and he's, he's seen your pain. So let, why don't we just let go and just let God do like the apostle Paul told us, forget in those things. God has given us another opportunity to get it right. I also realize that it, this, the things that we suffered in 2020 was real. I mean, it happened. It's some things that we can't, some of us can't even talk about. You know, we cried. Uh, uh, they hurt us. They left us. Uh, some of us lost our jobs. Some of us were depressed, uh, had anxiety, fear. Some of us couldn't sleep at night. Yes, we went through all of that, but now it's time to move forward and let it go. As a matter of fact, send it back to the pit of hell where it belong because the devil wants to upset our spirits. He wants to, us to continue to have fear, but God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Can I say that again? God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. So remember, God gave us love. He did not give us fear. And so I want you to be encouraged to know that this too will pass. We may man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. As a matter of fact, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So don't be shocked when you go through situations and circumstances in your life. Don't be shocked if your best friend walked out on you and talked about you. Don't be shocked of things that, you know, people that you trust that all of a sudden betrayed you. Don't be shocked about those things because we are the people of God. We're supposed to suffer and go through things. God suffered. He died on the cross. All the boys that hung with him, in the end, what they did, they failed him. They ran. They, and then they, they act like they didn't even know who he was because they didn't want to be crucified as he was crucified. They left him. They left him for dead, and he died on the cross, and he bled, and he rose again just for me and you. So if you're suffering today, just know you must have something God wants to do for you in your life. You must got something great inside of you and God want to pull it out of you. And sometimes when we're in pain and we're in distress and the things that we're going through, God is putting something great out of us so he can use us for his glory. You can't get nobody delivered if you've never been delivered. If you're hungry and, uh, and you can't feed nobody if God has fed you, you know, God, you know, sometimes will let us go through things and situations so we can feel the pain of other people. You know, sometimes when we grow up in the church and we've been there a long time, we think we're so, so what, uh, holy and thou, but we're no earthly good. And we want to criticize other people and the things that they've done. And sometimes we forget about who we were. Some of us was on that street. Some of us were prostitutes and some of us was drug dealers and some of us was liars and cheats. But sometimes when we get saved and all cleaned up, we snore up our nose at other folks. And then when things come our way, you ask God, God, why is this happening to me? Maybe it's because God is trying to humble you. Yeah, you had money, you had the big fine house, and you had the, the big job and everything, and you snurred up your nose at everybody. And then when COVID came, you lost all of those things. But God is, has not left you. He loves you. He's just wanting to break you and mold you and make you into what he wants you to be. So just be encouraged. Remember, just forget those things and let those things go. Let them get behind you. In other words, get it out of your system. Stop rehearsing it in your mind over and over again. What happened to you? Stop being afraid and upset. What, you know, feeling like God, you know, is not with you. David felt the same way when he told the Lord, you know, Lord, why? Why, God? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? David went through all of those things. You know, his friends forsook him and they tried to kill him. Saul tried to kill him. He did everything for Saul. He, he played for Saul and soothed his pain and the de demons left him 
when he was there and he served him well. And then he looked up one day and he was running for his life and he was in a place in a pit and he asked the Lord, why? Why have you forsaken me? People are going to laugh and they're going to say that you wasn't with me. God, why? And he began to, to, to just cry out to God and he felt sorry for himself. Then I, all of a sudden he came to himself and he said, but I will yet give God praise. And that's what I want you to do right now. I want you to give God praise. Quit paying attention to what you're going through. Get your eyes off the situation and forget it. Leave it behind and never revisit it. Why? Because if you don't, it will affect your life and cause emotional stress and physical self-inflicted wounds of bitterness and hatred, jealousy, issues with depression, anxiety, and stress. And physically, you can develop migraine headaches, blood pressure issues, diabetes, and even heart problems. And also, ladies, listen to this. You will end up having weight gain because your stomach can begin to get fat because of the cortisone that's in your body that comes from stress. And then you begin to be this. Uh, have a, uh, dis, uh, a judgmental spirit, what I'm trying to say, and get very discouraged. And when you get that discouraged spirit, you begin to be very judgmental and negative, a very negative attitude. And when you get that very negative attitude, then you have no peace of mind. And, and you're looking at everybody cross-eyed. <laughs> and, you know, you're making the wrong decisions and you're making poor bound, you, you're making some poor decisions and then you have poor boundaries in your life. And then you stop hearing from God and you don't want to hear what the pastor has to say. You don't want to listen to scriptures. And you're just all messed up because you're angry, you're bitter, and you're enraged. But I want you to forget those things. I know you hurt. And I'm not trying to minimize it. I've had some hurts in my life that devastated me and knocked me to my knees. But I had to get up because I wanted to survive. I had been saved too long to give up and throw everything away that I had learned in scriptures. Because when you learn something in scripture, you can't unlearn it. I don't care how many times you have left God and how many times you have backslidden or been in a backslidden position. You've heard God's voice. And God is calling you even now to come back home. I want you to say, I just want you to forget it. Forget the actions and everything that, that somebody did for you. And just remember what Pastor said in his message, which is the theme of this wonderful uh, year that we're going to be embarking in. It says, your actions will determine your outcome. So if you don't forget, if you don't forget and you keep digging up the dead, Keep digging up the pain. You will never change. It will determine your outcome. You're going to still be miserable. So I want to say to you, it's time to stop the madness. Embrace what God has for you. And, and take the antidote that he has for all of us. And that the antidote is love. That agape love that will cause us to forgive the unforgivable. And it would help us with to, to, to heal our pain and to heal our wounds. That agape love that I'm talking about is defined as unconditional love, selflessness love. It's complete. It's not superficial, but it's strong. It's untamed. It's transformable. In other words, it's amazing. That's the kind of love you need to be need to get in order to get through the situation that you're going through, this, the setback that, that, that came into your life and the fear and, and all the pain that you need to let go now, right now. So I want you to stop right now, right now, before it's 12 a.m. and forget what they've done to you. You know, your actions determine your outcome. This is the theme of the whole year for PDT Ministries 2021. So whatever your actions are is what's going to be coming into the next year. So I want you to get delivered before the clock strikes 12 a.m. Don't forget it. All right? I want you to use that agape you love, which is the alpha love, the alpha, alpha love. And I want you to know that it is powerful. It's amazing. It's transformable, untamed. It's strong. It's unconditional. The kind of love that God, the same God, the same love God had when he died on the cross, when he didn't even have to do it because he was not a, a, a man of sin. He came to the world as a man to die on the cross for us to redeem us back to him. So we need to have that kind of love because God is love. It challenges us. This kind of love challenges us not to seek revenge, that we carry the grudge against any person that has offended us, but we'll release them, would allow us to release them and let it go and to forgive and don't turn back 
and just forget it and come on, come on somebody. I keep saying that, but that's what the scripture told us, forgetting those things which are behind it. it this love that I'm talking about, it teaches us to love our neighbors as ourselves because God is love. He first loved us before we could even, even learn how to love somebody else. It's this, the kind of love that, 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 that we, that we need to have will help us get total deliverance from what we're going through, the pain, you know, the stress, the anxiety, all the things that we're holding on to. Well, you may say, well, you don't know what they did to me. No, I may not know what they did to you, but you don't know what they did to Jesus. We read about it, but was you there? He suffered much worse than you can imagine, but he let it go for you and he let it go for me. So I'm sure you can let it go if you put your mind to it. So even with me on my journey, I had some issues before I got saved. I had a journey that I was so upset with my father and the things that he done to me. But I learned to forgive him because I wanted to live an abundant life. And when I read the scriptures, I couldn't jump around those scriptures when the Bible told me to forgive. And if I don't forgive that, I would not be forgetting. For, I would not be forgiven. So I had to forgive my father. My father killed my mother when I was 15 years old by a single gunshot wound to her stomach. And in just one day, I lost my mother. I lost my father and my siblings. I lost my mother to death. I lost my father to the streets prison and Alzheimer's disease when he died just a few years ago. And I lost my siblings because we were separated and split up and into different homes to live. I hated my father. I didn't know how to love him. I was dying inside. And because of the traumatic experience that I experienced as a young child, I became an alcoholic. I was suicidal. I tried to commit suicide several times. I battled with depression and my struggles with self-importance and constant battle of, of anger management issues. I was broken. But by the grace of God, oh, by the grace of God, in the, my, the early 1980s, I encountered a supernatural encounter with the Almighty God. And I was miraculously able to overcome depression, alcoholism, suicide tendencies, and the resentment that I had toward my fathers and others that victimized me. And I want to share with you tonight, you can forgive and forget because you are more than a conqueror. If I could forgive and forget, let go of the past for something new, I wouldn't be in a position I am in today. I wouldn't be here talking to you. I wouldn't be here being totally delivered from alcohol, drugs, depression, and all the vices that I had in my life where I was just totally tormented in my life. But the almighty God, he lift me up. He seen something in me that I didn't even see myself. I was crushed. I was broken. I was suicidal. I didn't care about life, myself, or anybody else. But I got saved one day, and God delivered me and set me free, and the rest is history. God has blessed me now to be a Christian counselor, author of two books, a pastor's wife, and assistant pastor. I love what I do, and I love God people, people, and I love to help others walk in the journey that I walk of total love, healing, and forgiveness. And if God could deliver a mess like me, he can deliver you. Nothing is too hard for God. I want you to forgive, forget, let go, and just press your way to the high calling of God so you can love, forgive God's way and live your best life. God bless you and Happy New Year. I've learned it doesn't matter how you come into the presence of God but it's how you leave the presence of God when we get into the presence of the King every one of our issues and worries are taken care of what worship does is it takes my perspective off of what looks bad and
turn my eyes to who I know is good that when you get into the presence of the king when you worship here he'll work everything out at your address I don't know how long you travel I don't know how much gas it took you to get here but I just need somebody to give him glory here that when you lift up the hand he'll work it out back at your house when you my worship ain't just for me but your worship ought to affect your neighbor that it may not be for me but when I lift up my hands I'm positioning God to not just move for me but move on everybody on my road is there any worship? is there any worship? Why do we lift him? Why, why, why do we give him glory? Can you touch somebody next to you and tell him because he's in this room right now? How you probably can't see him, you probably can't feel him, but you, you're sitting, see, see, see. Look, look at somebody behind you, tell him he's here right now. And tell him because he's here, everything you need is here. I need all my worshipers, open up your mouth and give him glory right here. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, worshipers, lift up your voice. Come on, singers, come on. Come on, don't mute your worship. Oh, he's in the room. The king of kings, we bow down. To the King of Kings, you're here right now. Oh, oh. Be enthroned. To the King of Kings, is we bow down. Oh, be enthroned. I want y'all to say this. Repeat, say, sit for
We give it all over to you, Lord. Our issues, Father. Our bad habits, Father. We give it to you. We give it to you. Glory and honor, dominion and power. Glory.
In the Gullah culture, we believe in blood memory. Things that has happened to your ancestors, you can pull that same energy, that memory. On every watch night, that's what people feel. You're praying for your freedom. I always start counting down because you're getting closer to the time the president says whether you are free. The Gullah communities, they were buzzing. People were coming from miles. They were coming from off Edistil, Guatemala Islands, little tiny islands that people didn't even know existed. And you found black Union soldiers coming down here from the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. You found people lined up outside with drums and guitars and people having different pots of food, cooking, and, and it created a, a energy of welcome. We can get to the next level, regardless of what the situation is, we'll still be able to move forward. It was a great day, Emancipation Proclamation. Right here in Beaufort County, January 1, 12 o'clock, people crowded on boats to go across rivers to that spot which was known as Camp Saxon, to hear it read. Because the rumor was out that if you weren't there on site to hear it read, then you might not get to be free. People crowded into that little space and heard Mr. Brisbane, who had been sent down by Lincoln to read it to the, to the gathering of enslaved people at that point. The most important thing to me is for my people to know from whence they came and how they got to where we are. That, that, that's important because if you don't know where you come from, you're not going very far. When my people escape, they escape in a little battle with his wife and three children. The youngest of the three, she started to cry. And they could not make her stop crying. So he had to make a decision, either be caught or be gonna be free. He told his wife, he said, Raya, throw that gal overboard. God had her ready for the journey. So instead of throwing the baby overboard, she had a mattress that was stuffed with corn shell. So she threw that baby in that mattress, rolled that mattress around the baby held the baby close to her while the mattress muffled the baby's cry. And they made their way across the water to Hilton Head Island. It's a, it's a story that I can pass down to my children and to you know generations to come um, about our people and their determination to be free. Nobody can tell our story like us. We've been there. We've done that. The emancipation is an opportunity to talk about what we need to do and where we need to go for this country to really live out its creed of the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's our responsibility as Gullah people to get this out to the people. New Year's at the church, why? You eat this certain food, why? Y'all play the certain music, why? It boils down to freedom. This one tradition here is a tradition that affects everybody. To preserve it, we have to continue to practice. And of course, it will require all of us. The fight for freedom is everybody's fight. If we don't pay attention to that, then what we have as a country is gonna fall apart. If I'm not going to die with a broken heart, then 
I will have to see emancipations on January 1 being celebrated all over this country. Watchmen, please tell me the hour of the night. Mm -hmm. The time is one minute, one minute to twelve. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm excited to be here before you tonight to speak on this New Year's Eve service. Haven't we enjoyed ourselves thus far? We've had singing and ministry of the word. Our pastor is going to come forth after me, as well as our assistant pastor has already come forth and shared a dynamic message for you. So I'm so excited for what the year is going to bring. We've had a stressful, stressful year with COVID and with things that were happening and with social unrest in our country, uh, all the way down to the political vein when we talk about the election and different things of that nature. But I want you to put all of that stuff aside because God is about to allow us to hit the reset button on the new year. And so I'm excited. Let's go. Go with me here to the gospel according to St. John chapter 11, reading verses 43 through 44. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. And it reads this way. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. I want to talk to you tonight about the thought of it's time to get out of it. It's time to get out of it. And so I'm excited because in this particular passage of scripture, we find that the writer here, John, is writing concerning a very central character in the New Testament study by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus is interesting to us because Lazarus, to me, is one of the custodians of the faith. When we look at his sisters, Martha and Mary, those three were pretty much the ones that housed and operated the headquarters of Jesus's ministry. I know the scripture says that uh, that the son of God had no place to lay his head. And in many cases, that's true when we look at the ministry, the three and a half year ministry of Jesus. But if he were to have a headquarters, the Bible lets us know that it would have perhaps been Bethany. And more specifically, it would have been the house of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. And so we see here that the writer John is painting the picture of how hospitable Lazarus was, how committed to ministry Mary, Martha and Lazarus was. And so when we pick it up here in our text, we find here uh, that that it fast forwards to an event that was tragic, an event that was catastrophic, an event that was nothing that perhaps the disciples or any of those that were around Jesus would have thought would have happened. We find that this young man, Lazarus, finds himself dead. And one of the writers tells us that not only had he died, but he had been dead for well over three days. It is in one of these texts, we find that even Martha, the sister, of Lazarus begins to openly rebuke Jesus, uh, not to disrespect his deity, but, but in respect of their relationship as friends. And we understand that they were so closely in knitted together because Mary, Martha and Lazarus took care of the affairs of Jesus and the disciples during their ministry. And if you've ever worked with anybody, whether it's in ministry or on a secular job, if you work with them long enough, you develop a relationship where you can be candid and talk to them. And so we find here this is what Martha had developed this relationship with Jesus. And she was in her humanity hurt. She was disappointed. She did understand that yeah, how can I be committed to ministry the way that I've been committed to ministry and yet this happened to me how can I just devote my life to the work of the ministry I'm not out in the streets I'm not doing all kind of evil things 
I'm the one that's preparing the revivals when Jesus sweeps through Bethany. I'm the one that allows Jesus to rest after he's been on the evangelism circuit. I'm the one that feeds him. I'm the one that's so committed. If you remember, Martha was so cumbered that she had nothing but a central focus of serving the people of God. She couldn't understand why her sister Mary would take a time out just to sit at the foot of Jesus because she was passionate about ministry. So some of you are having the same experience. Some of you are having the same thing that you're dealing with in 2020. You're asking the question, God, how could all this stuff befall us? I can see if it happened to the world. I can see if it happened to the unrighteous. I can see it. It happened to those that are not living any kind of way. But God, how could this happen to me after being committed to ministry? How could my family be on the point of death? How could it be that my loved ones are on their sick? bed? How could it be that I'm about to foreclose on my house? How could it be that my car is being repossessed? Or how could it be that even my marriage is being broken when I've been committed unto ministry? Uh, but I want to testify unto you that what you're going through is not your final destination. What you're going through is not for your demise. What you're going through is not going to be what the epithet on your grave shall say. But this is a sickness that shall be for the glory of God. And we find here that the writer John tells us this. Martha said, had you been here, Jesus, my brother Lazarus would not have died. Had you been here, my brother Lazarus would have been alive. Had you been here, something would have been happened that would have been great instead of something so catastrophic and so detrimental to the life of my family. But I want to submit to you that Jesus never left you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. We serve a God that is omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere at all times. Uh, he has the ability to leave and go places, but never leave and go anywhere. And we find that the writer here is telling us that Jesus in his humanity began to weep. He began to cry. He began to feel bad because Lazarus was dead. This is my boy. This is my partner. Uh, I would like to call him Deacon or Trustee Lazarus. Uh, every good leader has some other leaders that, that serve them and that are affectionate to them. If, In other words, Lazarus was like his armor bearer. And I can imagine how Jesus felt that his deacon, his trustee, his armor bearer has died. And is not only dead, but has died three, uh, uh, three days. And, and if you know anything about Jewish customs, they believed uh, uh, earnestly that even if someone one died, uh, that they had the ability to be resurrected uh, as long as you got there before the third day, because they believed that the soul of a man hovered around them for about three days, uh, and they believed that something was magical about three days, uh, that in three days, resurrection was supposed to happen, uh, and so that now Lazarus was dead past three days, uh, and by now, I can imagine their hope uh, begin to be dismal, their hope and their faith begin to waver. Uh, but I want to testify to someone tonight. Uh, God stopped me by here to tell you uh, that you need to intensify your faith. Faith is unwavering belief in the face of opposition. Uh, how do you know that you have faith if your faith ain't never been tested? How do you know that you have faith uh, if your faith has never been tried? Uh, but faith is unwavering belief uh, in the face of opposition. Uh, I dare you to look at your problems right now in the eye uh, and say, despite what I'm going through, I have faith that God can do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. Uh, uh, but the problem in 2020 uh, is that a lot of folk have faith uh, but they've lost hope. Uh, I come to testify to you tonight uh, that you need to have faith and hope. Uh, faith says I believe that God can uh, but hope says that I believe that God will. Uh, I need somebody to put in the chat right now. Uh, I believe that God can uh, and I'm convinced that God will. Uh, I 
I have unwavering doubt in the face of opposition. And God stopped me by here to tell you this, uh, that you have to hold on sometimes, uh, even when your faith looks small. Because I want to testify to you, John tells us in John chapter 11, verse 25 through 26, he says, Jesus said unto them, said unto her, more specifically, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Can I just transliterate this with a few moments of time that I have here? I stop by here to tell you that faith survives death. Faith survives death because faith is immortal. I need to tell somebody that again somebody put that in the chat box uh, and say that faith is immortal faith can never die if God promised you something it does not have an expiration date on it if God promised you something it does not expire if God promised you something it is what it is if God promised you something it is signed sealed and you can wait for it to be delivered and I stopped by here to tell someone that God's delay is not his denial. God's delay is not his denial. The devil wants to mislead you and make you feel like a pandemic puts the promises of God on halt. The devil is a liar. Statistics say that there were more billionaires made during this pandemic than that has been made in the past century. In fact, they named an entire new name for billionaires that have accumulated over a hundred billion dollars during this pandemic. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying that God operates in the midst of calamity. God operates in the midst of chaos. God operates in the midst of turmoil. So instead of letting your faith waver, when you go through these trials and tribulations, you need to rejoice and look for the next opportunity. Somebody put that in the chat. There's opportunity in the midst of opposition. In fact, I've learned that when when I get opposition, that's when I look for God because I believe that miracles are right around the corner. So I stopped by here to tell someone that God is not through with you yet. God has not finished your course. It's time for you to come forth. It's time for you to stop hiding. It's time for you to stop being in obscurity. It's time for you to rise up because this sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. And God's going to get the glory out of this. Somebody ought to rejoice in their living room, in their house, watching their TV, on your smartphone, Wherever you're viewing this, you ought to say God is about to get the glory out of this situation. The devil thought you were dead. Your enemies cast you out. They said you were done. They said, oh, that was old news. But you ain't seen nothing yet. If you think God used me before, wait till I come out of this tomb. If you think God used me before, wait till I take these grave clothes off. If you think God used me before. Wait till you see how God revives me again. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Somebody ought to give God glory and praise right now for 2021 is going to be a greater year. I know you thought that we were false prophets when we said that 2020 was the year of clarity. It was the year of clarity. You might not have got the money you wanted. You might have to stay at home a little bit longer. You might have to become a tutor to your kids. But God opened up our eyes and let some of us see some things that we had never 
never saw before. He gave us dreams and visions. Some of you started new businesses because you thought you were doing it out of desperation. But it wasn't desperation. God used the trying of your faith to bring you out as pure gold. And so I stopped by here in my closing seconds to tell someone to come forth. Come out of that. I speak with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I speak to some of Lazarus's out there. You've been in ministry and your ministry looked like it died. Your phone wasn't ringing no more. Folks wasn't calling upon you no more. The pastor may not have asked you to do anything no more. And you thought that your ministry was dead. But I come to let you know that was just God trying to revive you and bring you back to life. Because I need your faith to be stronger than it ever been before. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God wants to do for you this year. And so for the next 10 seconds, let's just lift up our voices and lift up our hands all over the place and give God praise and give God glory and give God thanks and give God the honor that he deserves because he's calling you forth with a mighty hand because he loves you. No longer will you have to die by the wayside. No longer will you be in obscurity. No longer will you be depressed. No longer will you hold that grudge. No longer will you be despondent. But this year shall be my greatest year. Somebody type that in the comments. We're not saying that out of cliche, but God said we can have whatever we say. So I dare you to start speaking some miracles out of your mouth and say, God, I declare and decree that I'll no longer dumb down my anointing, that I'll no longer dumb down the precious gift that you've given me. I'll no longer make myself small uh, to make folks feel comfortable uh, but God I walk in the newness of life uh, I walk in the beauty of holiness uh, I walk in the integrity that you've called me to be in uh, because God you've called me to come forth somebody ought to listen to that tonight somebody ought to be encouraged somebody ought to know that greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world and somebody ought to be charged and ready to go forth and be encouraged because 2021 is the year that you're going to come out. We expect to move from you.
mouths open. Can you offer God another yes? And we believe as you say yes that he's going to start responding with a yes tonight. He's going to respond with an amen tonight. He's going to respond with an it is so tonight. Beyond what we can think, beyond what we can ask, he's able to do. He's able to go beyond. He's able to go before. Come on, let's lift it up, church. Y'all know it. This is what we say. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Lift it up, church. Exceedingly. Sing it out. Exceedingly, abundantly, he's gonna do. He will do. Exceedingly, abundantly, yes, Lord. Above all that, we ask God. Welcome. I'm Dr. Roger L. Green, Sr., pastor and founder of Prayer and Deliverance Worldwide Ministry, coming to you again on this December 31st. Oh, glory be to God. We are facing a new year. Glory be to God. Somebody said I never would have made it. Glory be to God. If the Lord had not been on our side, I am excited. I am aesthetic about what the new year is going to bring. Listen, 2020 wasn't a bad year for me. I don't know what your testimony is, but I believe that God has given us another chance at life, and we're going to be excited and live it to the fullest. Glory be to God. I heard somebody say we need to live our best life, and that's what we're going to do. But I want to share a word of God with you at the close of this uh, 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 2020 year uh, in hopes of encouraging somebody uh, to continue to love the Lord and to stay on the side of the Lord and stay on the report, uh, uh, could keep the report that the Lord has given. It doesn't matter how bleak and how dim things might sound for the coming year, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Glory be to God. And so I want to invite your attention tonight to Job chapter 32, verse number 6 through verse number 10. And what we're going to talk about uh, tonight is the voices of our days. Days turn to weeks, weeks turn to months, and months turn into years. All right. And so uh, we thank God for that. All right. Let's look at our scripture. The scripture says, Elihu, the son of Barachel, uh, the Buzzite, answered and said, I am young and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and durst not show you mine opinion. I said days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the age understand judgment. Therefore I said, hearken to me, I also will show mine opinion. I want to uh, digress a little bit and go back uh, up to verse number seven, where the scripture says, I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach 
wisdom. Glory be to God. And so I, I, would, I would ask the question at this juncture, uh, all of these new years that we have celebrated, what have we learned uh, from those uh, years? Because uh, according to the scripture, it says they should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Glory be to God. Here Elihu overcomes his hesitation to speak. Uh, he is now uh, ready and eager to speak, though, uh, because he has overcome his hesitation. He's ready to share his thoughts. Uh, he also um, assumes that he can communicate uh, his thoughts efficiently and effectively in the setting that he finds himself. Um, he is uh, uh, he, the youngest of the group. Uh, he is among uh, some men who he feels uh, should uh, possess uh, great wisdom and he was reluctant to speak because he was trying to learn something, you know, from, from them. And so it shows us that he waited until Job had finished uh, his speaking as well as the other men. And uh, after that, they had spoken there. Uh, there was no wisdom in sight. And this is what uh, sort of agi agi agitated or aggravated or, or angered him because uh, he thought that simply because they were older and experienced that he was, that they were going to tell him something that he could grab hold to and as a young man uh, carry forward with him, right? He expected the older men to teach him something that he didn't know. Uh, because of their years, right? But he said, I heard but little wisdom from the three older men. <laughs> he said, I heard them. They were talking loud, but they weren't saying nothing. Uh, I heard them, but I didn't hear any wisdom coming from them. Glory be to God. And, and so, therefore, he concluded that great men are not always uh, wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. So what he is saying is that just because a person has uh, a, a sufficient amount of age doesn't mean that they're able to distinguish things, doesn't mean that they're able uh, to understand things better than a younger man. It is all based upon and predicated on wisdom, right? And so then, uh, Elihu was disappointed when looking to his seniors uh, for wisdom, but could not find any. And, and another way of stating that is that he was looking to his seniors for guidance. He was looking to them for direction and instruction, uh, but he found none. And because he was not able to find any, he was forced uh, to overcome his hesitation and to speak his opinion, and he was a, uh, at first he was he was very very uh, reluctant because you know I, I can imagine him saying I don't want to get out here and make myself look like an idiot uh, among all these wise men uh, because of their age and their gray hairs uh, and uh, uh, and that kind of thing, and so uh, he finally lets us know that it is sorrowful that the lapse of years will not make us wiser. Wow. What he is saying is that it is pitiful. It's sorrowful for us to live all these years, celebrate all these new incoming years, and never learn anything from the year in retrospect. Glory be to God. And so uh, I can imagine how he is feeling. Uh, but he says that if those years, though, are overlaid with the grace of of God with the teaching of the Holy Ghost, glory be to God, there will be a difference. There will be a difference. Every year's experience should make a Christian riper, glory be to God. Uh, yet without the Holy Ghost, without the Holy Spirit, it is possible that it will not make him riper, but make him more rotten. 
Oh, glory be to God. There is wisdom even in that. In knowing that, you know, you can go through life, you can go through these years and not learn a thing. You know, you can be uh, just as void of knowledge and void of, of wisdom uh, and experience uh, this year as you were last year because you didn't allow the Holy Ghost to teach you and guide you and instruct you and lead you into all truths. Glory be to God. That is the difference maker right there. And so he says, among sinners, the worst uh, there is are those who have been at the trade the longest. Glory be to God. The one that has been practicing sin for the longest is the worst. And so uh, he lets us to know that among the Christian saints, that it is not always the best uh, who have lived long enough to grow cold, but it is those who have taken in wisdom that life have taught them through their experiences. You cannot measure a man's wisdom by the baldness of his head or the grayness of his hair. I know some folks got a head full of gray hair that, you know, you, you really have to hold your stomach to listen to some of the things that come out of their mouth. But I just thank God that the Holy Ghost is the difference maker. The grace of God is the difference maker. Yet if the Spirit of God is there to sanctify us, there will be a difference. It's the Spirit of God that makes the difference. For the Scripture declared, without the Spirit of God, we are none of His. Therefore, what I'm trying to say to you is this. No matter how many New Year's, how many watch nights we, we celebrate, unless we obtain wisdom from each year, then we are not made any better. And we'll discuss a little bit more of this as soon as we come back from our break. God bless you. Thank you for remaining with us. 
We're going to pick up where we left off uh, before the break. We said no matter how many years we celebrate, unless we obtain wisdom from them, uh, then we are not made any better. We must, as a Christian soldier, you must go after wisdom. You must chase after wisdom. Uh, don't let the years go by and your hair turn from black to gray and you not obtain wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Go after wisdom. When you get wisdom, guess what? It'll help you stop making a lot of foolish mistakes. When you get wisdom, it'll help you make better choices, better decisions. It'll stabilize you uh, and, and, and keep you on the straight and narrow. It's very important that we understand the value and significance of wisdom in the life of a saint of God. All right. So we thank God for that. All right. And so then if we are not obtaining wisdom, uh, then uh, what are we learning? What are we learning year after year, day after day? Because days, according to the scripture, have a voice. And if days have a voice, then they speak. And so if days are going to speak, then what are your days saying? Is, uh, is the question that's being promulgated to you today. What are your days saying? What is the end of this year saying unto you, seeing how there has been 364 or 365 days in the leap year that you have lived that have brought you to the new year? What have you learned from the previous year? What have you learned from the days that are going by? What are those days saying to you? And I, it would be good to stop and take a moment sometime and just to listen, to say, okay, days, uh, what are you saying to me concerning this year? In fact, you should learn something every day. You should start learn something every day. So Elihu said the days that should speak, each day should have a lesson, should have a lesson. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Each day should teach us to adore the mercy which kept us alive. Glory be to God. While the images of death was on our faces during the night. Glory be to God. Each day should bring that into remembrance when you wake up. Glory be to God. Realizing that sleep is near kin to death and walking is a rehearsal of the resurrection. Glory be to God. Therefore, each day should be celebrated as though it is a new year. And some of us come to the new year and we are so dry. We are dry as cornflakes without milk and we don't open our mouth. We don't rejoice and give thanks. But I come to say to you today, we ought to give God some thanks. Lord, I just want to thank you for having made it another year. I just want to thank you for brought me to when danger was all around, death was all around. But God, you showed favor unto me and brought me to the end of another year. I'm excited about what you've done for me. And I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm going to let my day begin to speak the wisdom that I've been gained through the year that I have just lived. And listen, if I learn nothing else, I learn how to give you the praise and to give thanks and give uh, 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 attention to the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. If I learn nothing else, amen, I learn how to humble myself and be meek under the mighty hand of God and let God God exalt me in due time because I don't know from day to day what tomorrow is going to be, bring. Hey, listen, I'm reminded of a song, amen, by Reverend Timothy Wright, the late great Reverend Timothy Wright. He said, I really don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know what the new year is going to bring. I really don't know. Maybe a little sunshine, maybe a little rain, but this one thing I know, it is well with my soul. I give God the praise and give God the glory. Saints of God, you all rejoice and thank God for being able to see another year. God bless you. Happy New Year. 
Thank God for you. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful New Year celebration. Even if you have to dance around in your own living room, we may not be in the sanctuary, but where you are now is the sanctuary. Give God the praise. Well, here we are getting ready to cross over the threshold into 2021, and we want you to join us for a countdown into this new year that we are about to embark upon. So get something to celebrate. Come back, amen. Pay attention. Help us count down with us as we get ready to bring in this new year. All right, here we go. All right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one lift off Woo! happy new into year. the new year now god bless you we thank god for you if you're here today and you have triumphed the devil thought he had you but, but you, you got, got away it is a new year now let's have a word of prayer let's bring Amen. it in right Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for every heart, every soul. God, I give you all the praise and all the glory for having brought us from a mighty long way, having kept us, watched over us, and protected us, and shielded us. God, I pray that you would bless their homes, bless their families. God, give them the desires of their heart in this new year, and we're going to praise you throughout this year. We're going to give you all the glory and all the honor. That's do your name. Yes, Lord. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Heaven smile upon you. Amen. Happy New Year Happy New to Year. every one of you Amen. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Yeah.